All right, Austin. So you just took down this Win a Taiga tournament uh, with Mono Red Obosh. And yep. I think you were telling me you drove two hours to get there, right? Yeah, uh, me and uh, two other of my friends uh, made the trip up from Richmond, Kentucky, which is just south of Lexington. Uh, two of us, counting myself, managed to, to make it into top eight, so that was sweet. Who was the other one? Was it uh, Drew playing Mono Black? Yeah. Okay. Drew on Mono Black, yeah. And if I remember right, he mentioned to me that it was his first time playing the format and he actually just borrowed that deck. Yeah. Uh, I've played the format just like in a little bit of testing, but uh, I hadn't tested the Obosh list before the event at all. I was on like a blue white sort of flash style deck, but wasn't loving it. I couldn't like figure out a sideboard that I liked, so I, I just switched to Obosh and it happened to do well. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because you're pretty new to the format too. I guess first off, how did you uh, yeah. how did you hear about it? Are you one of Jim's friends, or did you hear about? Yeah. It okay. Uh, Jim. Um, I guess maybe early February or late January messaged me about the format and asked uh, asked me to make him a deck list. And <laughs> uh, I like started with Dredge because that seemed the most obvious place to start. Um but didn't love the dredge list. But then the the possibilities of the format really intrigued me because there's basically endless possibilities in, in how you can build a deck. And I have a I have a, a folder on my Moxfield that just has like 90 deck lists in it. I've just yeah. sort of gone crazy brewing. But uh, just thinking on like old standard decks or uh, modern decks or or even Pioneer or or even legacy just decks that can't really exist anymore for one reason or another, but can in this format. And I think that's sweet. You can get your hit of nostalgia, play with your pet cards, etc. Yeah. It feels really historic, you know, like that's something people have mentioned. Yeah. I know there have been some ports of like mono black lists, um, kind of from black devotion being a thing. Yeah. That's where I started for sure. Yeah. I know that, uh, Preston who just won our eight week league at monster, he would pull a lot of Penny Dreadful lists because uh, there's a lot of card overlap. <laughs> yeah. So you, like, you get weird stuff like Hypergenesis. Um, and it sounds like you went through a lot of iterations of brewing. So can you talk more about like what actually... Why why Mono Red and why Obosh specifically over like a lower to the ground, like all in burn with like Sulfuric Vortex, Pyrostatic Pillar kind of thing? So uh, Mono Red specifically because i felt like it has a ton of tools uh some of its best cards are super cheap lightning bolt is no longer a five dollar card anymore it's 50 cents or whatever so that's a huge boon and then chain lightning the reprint and dominaria remastered or whatever it's called uh made that card really cheap too and those are like linchpin red cards uh but in addition to that, being monocolor is huge in this format. Uh, the mana fixing is not very good unless you're willing to play tap lands, and a lot of people aren't. Uh, as far as why, like a an Obosh list as opposed to uh, like actual just straight burn, I think the advantages are you can play a, a much grindier game than you can in in a a burn deck. You have so much to do with your mana in this deck. You have I have eight creature lands uh, with four Kitu Encampment and four uh, Mishra's Factory. You have the Obosh and uh, just a, a fair amount of card draw or effective card draw between Experimental Synthesizer and Lelia. Uh, yeah, I think I answered all your questions there. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think Lelia is crazy. Um, yeah, best card in the deck. Not close. Because that card doesn't see play anywhere else, right? Like, maybe Fringe Legacy play, but not really. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like Fringe, Fringe Legacy play. I think people yeah. tested with it for a little while, and they're just kind of off it now. Right, because it's, 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 leg it's not legal anywhere except Legacy and Art uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, I know people think it's one of the like best five cards in Vintage Cube. So Yeah, that tracks for me. Um, so, yeah, I really like the Lelias. Um, I know you were talking about the... The creature lands. You also have four spike field hazards, right? Yeah. So, so it's I effectively get for you to cast the Obosh, but you're also not flooding out, right? Yeah, you effectively have 24 lands, but uh, only actual actual 20 lands, only 12 mountains. So half of your lands 
do something. Yeah, no, that's awesome. A um, couple questions on specific card choices, and I kind of want to talk about sure. your matchups. Uh, Flame Slash, how did that feel all weekend or all um, tournament? It's basically just terminate in this format. It's it a sorcery, like obviously. It, right? But uh, I, in round two, I played against Delver, and Talarian Terror was unbeatable. Uh, my opponent played two. I, I'm not really sure there's something you can do to fix that. So if you want to beat this deck, play a Talarian Terror deck, I guess. Yeah. Uh, there's there's no one for one you can play, and and the ward makes it basically impossible to kill with two spells. You have to have like six mana. Right, that's just not doable. You would kind of have to be on red blasts or something. <laughs> yeah, um, which are which, expensive, obviously. Yeah, you'd have to really plan for that. Um, additionally, the Lanterns of the Lost. I, I like that, coming in with mainboard graveyard hate. Did that feel yeah. like it was pretty relevant? Um, so round one I played against Martyr Proc, and I think having a Lantern won me game one, just being pre-boarded. I, my initial list was for Pyrite Spellbomb, um, but I decided I wanted to just sort of hedge my bets, and, and instead of playing four Graveyard Hate cards in the board, I just split it two and two. It, they cycle at worst for two mana, so yeah, it can never be outright terrible. That makes sense to me. Yeah, it's really not that bad. Um, it seems like you're going to have enough mana to cycle them if you need to. Um, yep. I like the Pirate Spellbombs, too, because if I were playing Mono Red, I would be terrified of Core Firewalker and Sanctifier and Vec. Yeah, definitely. Uh, those are those are why those are there. That makes sense. Uh, I saw you also had the Sulfur Elemental to bring in <laughs> against Mardok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely was my, my one of for that matchup. Yeah, uh, I know I've talked about Martyr Proc being a menace for a long time. My buddy Will plays it. And yeah, I think after I his after his match with you, he sent me a Facebook message and said, someone who's never played the format before had a Sulfur Elemental in their sideboard. Because of you, you owe me a Taiga. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it is like, because of you. I was like, yeah, that's fair. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Um, then it looks like Void Mirror for obviously, you know, unfair matchups. Yeah. Um, um, I would love for those to be Stone Brains. Um, but those are kind of pricey, right? Just doesn't fit in the budget. Yeah. They're like a dollar. Yep. And as someone who's been playing High Tide for a while, I'm pretty afraid of Stone Brain. Um, whereas Void Mirror feels a lot more beatable. So I think you've correctly identified that that would be better. Um, Soul Guides, as Graveyard Hate makes sense. Pillages, mostly a nod to Tron, or are you bringing those in against. Um, non-tron decks just like people who want to have lands in play so basically uh i want to get flame slash out of my deck against control uh because uh, sure. it's it just doesn't do anything whatsoever so pillage is versatile enough against like artifact decks and and things like that that it takes you know two sideboard slots effectively for one card so right. i get to i get to cut against control my plan was cut Cut Flame Slash, cut either Lantern or Pyrite Spellbomb based on whether I want to be more aggressive with Burn or if they are a deck that uses their graveyard and just swap swap the, the Spellbomb slash Lantern and then cut the Slashes for Pillage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I like that it plays double duty because blowing up a Cranial Plating <laughs> is a big deal. Yeah, uh, it was it was big against Enchantress too, uh, being able to hit lands their Wild Growth up or or whatever. That makes sense. Yeah, I was playing uh, Troll Worship a while ago, and someone reanimated an Ashen Rider and blew up my land with, like, two or three Wild Growths on it. But that felt good. Uh, yeah, someone had fun that game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I really like the deck list. Let's, uh, let's kind of run through some of the matchups. Um, sure. Definitely, I'm just curious what you played against, how it felt, and if you felt like there were any holes in your strategy or, like, in your sideboard plan, you know? Because one thing I found is it's really hard to have the right sideboard in this format because it's like, are you going to play against Infect, High Tide, Affinity, Cephalid Breakfast, Hard yep. Control? Like, you know, there's just such a diversity of decks. Yeah, uh, it definitely feels like modern a little bit in that regard. Um, you'd love to have a 20-card sideboard or whatever. Uh, yeah. So round one, I played against Martyr Proc. Uh, game one, I was just able to out outgrind him because I was able to nuke his graveyard, so Abiding Grace didn't really do anything. Yeah. Uh, game two, uh, he opened Speaker into Sack Martyr, make an Angel, play 
Abiding Grace turn three. So that was straight unbeatable. Yeah. Uh, the, the nut draws from Martyr are crazy. Starting to yeah. make Angels on turn two is absurd, and it happens more than you expect. For sure. Uh, and then game three, um, I stumbled a bit land-wise. I think my first land drop was a spike killed hazard. My second land drop was a spike killed hazard. <laughs> then I missed my third land drop for two turns. My third land drop was, you guessed it, a spike killed hazard. Uh, but I was able to, to one for one a little bit and stall him out. And then was able to Vampire's Vengeance in response to a Benevolent Bodyguard that was going to grow a Champion of the Parish to a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, okay. So I got to, like, 4 for 1 off that. Uh, and then was able to Sulfur Elemental the following turn to clear, like, 2 or 3 X1s. And then from there, it was about building a board up and then outing the Kami Lock, which essentially amounted to killing one during my main phase attacking he sacks the other one and then he brought it back and i in step killed it and was able to to deal lethal damage that way yeah that makes uh, sense i think it's good to know for everyone who's facing down a commie lock that it's like a spore frog you can just kill it on in step yep that's um, that's what what you want to do definitely and for that reason uh like this deck doesn't have that many instant speed uh removal spells honestly it only has it only has bone crusher lightning bolt and spike field hazard so spell bomb if you're playing this deck you should bring that in on top of the fact that they're they're a white deck so they could have the protection from red creatures that makes sense now i've got a question this isn't meant to be a gotcha um yeah bone crusher giant stomp yeah damage can't be prevented this turn was that uh on your radar because i've certainly missed that before uh it was not at this point but it was later that's what because you played against Enchantress in the final, so this yeah. is good against the um, Solitary Confinement lock as well, right? Yeah, I played it. I played him in round three also. Uh, hmm. So okay, that is when I I realized because that I was like, I I presumed before playing the matchup that Enchantress was a terrible matchup for me, uh, but matchup. I was like thinking on my outs and and Stomp was it? Yeah, and it, it's crazy because. I feel like that line of text doesn't matter very often, but when it does, it just turns like a really difficult matchup into who cares, you know? Yeah. Uh, another thing Stomp does is if your opponent's playing protection from red creatures and they block, you Stomp, then the damage can't be prevented. You can you can out Core Firewalker or Sanctifier that way. I completely forgot about that part of text. Yeah. Protection's you such should... a complicated ability. Yeah, you just attack with one of your one-two prowess creatures, and they're like, "Oh, I'll block," and then you stomp them, and your guy lives in their dies. Wild. All right, so round one, not too bad. How was round yep. two? Round two, I played against Blue Red Delver. Um, yep. Game one, uh, they went terror into terror, um, and I was able to sort of fight back a little bit, but my opponent. Drew Unholy Heat into top deck Unholy Heat to kill my Obosh, and I was just behind the gun, so I conceded. Uh, game two, I believe I just profitably interacted with, with most of their threats and was able to keep their graveyard small so they could never really get a terror out, and the same thing happened in game three. Okay. Uh, round three, I played against Enchantress. Um, basically, every game against Enchantress went... I stick a Lelia, it grows to like an 8-8 eight, eight or a 9-9. Nine, nine. I buy Obosh, I play Obosh, I eventually attack and then stomp, and they're dead. That makes sense, yeah, because there's not a lot of removal in Enchantress. They're really relying on the prison uh, side of things. I think I was looking at his list earlier, and he actually updated the title to Enchantress Prison. <laughs> um, yeah. But when the prison elements aren't working, uh, you really just have to worry about an early Paradox Zone growing out of range, yeah. but... That's not Even good. then, you like in game one, you have so many like dead cards that the the engines don't turn on that fast. It needs to be like like the third activation can be a problem, I guess. But the first two, you can just flame slash. You're gonna have them in your hand some amount of the time. Yeah, because you're really only your only target really is Sithis at that point. So uh, they have the O2 that makes mana equal to enchantments. Oh yeah, Sanctum Weaver, I think. Uh, but but if they have if they have Sterling Grove, those have Shroud, so you're not killing them uh, yeah. with with burn spells, anyways. Yeah, makes sense. Seems like a pretty good matchup, all things considered. Um, yep. Round four. 
uh, intentionally drew round four with, oh, yeah. um, I forget their, their name. They were on Thopter Sword. Uh, Doug. Gifts. Yeah. Yep. Very, very nice gentleman. Had a ton of fun talking to him throughout the day. Yeah, I think, uh, so Doug's a super old school player. He's been playing even this format for a long time. Um, yeah. And he's just like one of the kindest magic players I've ever met. Sure. And also incredibly good. Um, yeah, really, really wild take on it. The Thought for Sword list is crazy. Um, and then yeah. you drew f round five as well, right? Uh, so round five, my opponent, Ash on blue-white, wanted to play to try to get higher seeding uh, so that oh. he would be on the play for throughout the top eight. Oh, that's uh, I thought about that. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for him, I swiftly 2-0'd him. Um, game one, I think I just got a relatively aggressive uh, prowess creature draw, which I think is a huge draw to this deck in general. Uh, we can talk talk more about that later. But yeah. uh, game two, we just kind of I hit a bunch of land drops uh, continuously. My hand at one point was just like bolt, 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 two mountains. Um, and then I had two Monastery Swift Spears in play. He was at like 18. Um, and I bought Obosh and passed, and he tapped out for uh, Dream Trawler. And I untapped, played my seventh land, cast Obosh, attacked, no blocks, and I double bolted him for 24 damage between the bolts doing six and the prowess creatures each doing six. Oh, that's. So from 18 to negative six. That's disgusting. Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't feel like we've actually really talked about Obosh very much. Um, yeah. Do you let me step back for a second? Outside of this yeah. format, what's your magic background? What uh, what do you play? What do you like? Uh, are you a modern grinder? What's the situation there? Uh, lately, I guess I've been a modern grinder. Um, but I would say the format I've played most in the past like three or four years is Legacy. Uh, I play Blue Red Delver typically in Legacy, but I've been branching out, just playing some some decks that are, I guess, less spiky and more trying to explore the format. But I would say generally my background is like a red aggressive player. Uh, but I prefer like the creature red aggressive decks uh, less on the burn wheelhouse, more on prowess. And prowess is what I play in modern generally. Prowess seems really good in modern right now. Um, yeah. What's, what's your opinion on companions? Uh, are they just busted? Are they fine? Yeah, uh, I mean, they're it's busted. Card, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are coming around on this. Like even once we ban the good ones, it's still a free eighth card, right? Yeah, I'm I'm playing um, Gigantha right now in Modern, mm. and like, does it come up very often? No, but it's a free card, so you should play it. It's probably better than your 15th sideboard card. Yeah, and how often would you say you actually uh, had Obosh be relevant? You know, was it uh, every? It match? was super relevant all okay. the time. Um, yeah. I, it was relevant in round one. I think I bought it in two of the three games, probably the two games I won. Um, round two, I bought it once in game one, and it would have been relevant, but it, it just got unholy heated for the full six. Yeah, um, and I don't I mean. think yeah. I don't think I bought it in games two or three. Round three, I brought I bought it in both games, and it was super relevant because it basically meant all my attacks were lethal. Um, <laughs> Lelia dealing double damage is is just Disgusting. absurd. Once it once it gets to a certain point. Um, and then I bought it against blue white control in both games also, uh, in, in the Swiss. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Companions um, are good. I wish Gigantha wasn't uh, weirdly $6. $5. Yeah. yeah. Like what's up with yeah. that? Just ban it out of modern already so that I can play it. Yeah. That, that is how that works. Um, I think, I think more people should be exploring Luris. Uh, yeah, it does feel like is Luris is cracked. a little underexplored, right? Yeah. I know uh, Dave's been playing Red Black Luris for a while. We've seen. Yeah, I saw the like the webcam so. event. Yep. Um, I've been spending a little time looking at a Red Black Luris. It's a little lower to the ground and plays Crack the Earth. Uh, okay. Single red. Each player sacrifices a permanent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's good with Young Pyromancer, um, Unlucky Witness, and then you know Cabal Therapy fits in there as well. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So then, beating Blue White going in. So you were you were first seed in the top eight. Yep. Right? Okay. So I got I got play throughout the uh, the top cut, which is great for me because I'm a red aggressive deck. So yeah, that's a big deal. And uh, remind me what your top eight matches were. I know you finished on Enchantress. Yeah. So round one, I played against Infect. Um, I think we played a total of ten minutes of Magic. Uh, yeah, because I'm seeing what uh, twenty four spells that kill infect creatures yeah is that right? i main deck i have 20 24 removal spells and post board i, I brought in the the vampires vengeances also so 
up to 26. Um, uh, I think I, I brought in the spell bombs also. So I actually have 26 main if you count the spell bombs, right? 4, 8, 12, yeah. 16, 20, oh, yeah, 22 main. Sorry, 22 main and up to 26 post board. That's, I mean, that's just um, so hard, right? Even with a lot of blossoming column or blossoming defenses or whatever, that's just a lot to play through. Also, mulligan, uh, infect mulligans a lot, which is uh, just a product of, of how that deck works. You have to have a threat. Um, yep. And, and that was, it was um, classic infect, not blaze and shoal infect, right? Yeah, it was it was like green black plague stinger uh, seal, whatever the green seal is, seal of strength. Oh yeah, sure. I think yeah, that I kind of stuff. Kid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so game one, he mulligan to five, and I opened soul scar mage, which means just like the regular pump spells don't do anything. You have to have exactly hexproof because my spells deal damage in the form of minus one minus one counters. So your pump spell may save it for a turn, but then the next turn it's just going to die to, to stay based actions. Yeah, I uh, think Soulscar Mage is secretly disgusting. And I mean, yeah. it's $7 of your budget, and then Lele is another 7 but it looks like you've got that room easily. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got, like, looking at my list here, I've got all, over $2 left in the budget still um, with the way it's currently configured. Yeah, and it doesn't so. seem like you have a lot of gaps i mean i guess you could change like a void mirror or two out to a stone brain or something yeah yeah uh, uh we can talk more about the sideboard uh in a bit yeah sure uh and then game two he mulliganed to, to five or six i don't remember which one but i just had the removal spells for his threats uh he played he played two i killed them both and then yep. the match was over basically that makes sense uh, at that point you kind of just win with a ham sandwich right like a lot of his cards yeah. are stranded it doesn't really matter yeah uh round uh in the semis i played against thopter sword uh game one dug assembled thopter sword and i wasn't able to to beat that uh game two i was able to have a pretty aggressive start um that deck has a lot less card advantage than uh you may think it does just like thinking about thopter sword as a, a deck in general but I was able to just like out card advantage him, and he wasn't able to assemble Thopter Sword. Yeah. Uh, and then game three, he like sudden edicted a couple of my guys, and then I I was putting the pressure on him. And end of turn, he was able to gifts for a Thopter Sword pile. Um, but he was only able to make one Thopter, and I responded to the Sword of the Meek trigger and killed it with a Spike Field Hazard. And one was able to untap and and deal more than lethal between a couple of prowess creatures and a, a fairly sizable Lelia. Wow, yeah, because I know that Doug typically really doesn't like losing to red aggressive strategies. I mean, no one does, but Doug really doesn't like it. Yeah, um, I think his configuration today was a little bit more leaning into black than it sometimes is, and I think it was a little bit more geared for unfair matchups. I know he had like a lot of duresses, extra baits. I, I heard you talking about that earlier. <laughs> Yeah, he messed tournament. me up in round one. <laughs> yeah. He, oh, it was awful. Um, so, yeah, I think this configuration maybe was a little bit off for you specifically. Um, but I don't know. I think regardless, you're going to have a lot of game against it. Um, one thing I want to say about this deck compared to regular red is that you have so many permanent, repeatable sources of damage, just life gain isn't going to do it. You really need to deal with the creatures. Yeah. Uh, so, like... Like, Blossoming Calm is fine against my deck. It'll, like, effectively gain you 7 life or whatever, countering a Bolt plus plus gain, the gain 4, but it yep. it doesn't matter that much if, if Lely is hitting you for 7 or 14 with a Nobosh or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point, right? Because if your creatures are unanswered, you essentially have, you know, infinite damage, whereas Burn yeah. is drawing, like, 3 damage per turn once they're, you know, empty-handed. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really So good many point. Mana Sinks in this deck. Yeah, because one thing I was thinking about asking earlier was, you know, would you consider one or two copies of Faithless Looting just in case you're flooding out? But the answer I don't is think you, so. don't, you don't really flood out, do you? <laughs> no. Because uh, if you, you have seven lands in play, chances are you can wake up two creature lands. Um, yep. Or you have... Cast, buy an Obosh, cast an Obosh, crack a Synthesizer, I was going to say, how often are you finding yourself cracking a Synthesizer? Uh, pretty often. Um, I think I cracked three against in game one against Delver. Okay. I lost that game, but... It was it was relevant that they were there, and I think I cracked a couple against Blue White Control and a couple against uh, Enchantress and against um, against Softer Sword. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I think the card's just really good. 
when I, I heard in the early rounds that Mono Red Obosh with Synthesizer was doing well, and my first questions were like, you know, are there any Kuldatha rebirths or... Uh, that card's expensive. Is it now? Uh, yeah, it's the... like $4. Popper players, man. What are we going to yeah. do? Yeah. And then I you got the new one, Lethal there's, Demolition. Yeah. There's but. a new one, and then I know there's the there's the mono red artifact uh, deck in modern that plays like synthesizer and shrapnel yeah, blast. Yeah, eight blast. Um, but it seems like you're just playing these. It doesn't really matter that it's an artifact. You're not really leveraging that. It's just a good card. Yeah, I had a list. My first list that I built for Obosh Red was very much so leaning on on artifacts more. It played like four synthesizer, four Mishra's research desk, four spell bomb. Uh, for Voldaren Epicure, and was trying to turn on Metalcraft Galvanic Blast. Um, yep. But I just decided the prowess creatures, uh, though Soulscar Mage is a hefty monetary investment, they're worth it. Um, I agree. The utility offered by the, the second line of text on Soulscar is great, but most importantly, they give you a fighting chance against any bad matchup. Um, if you curve out prowess creature into prowess creature prowess creature you can pretty easily turn three kill um so you can just race the combo decks if worse comes to worse yeah and i really like that dynamic of it um kind of having that out to the unfair things because you would think that you know you're not interacting on the stack you're not interacting with discard spells so you would think you would have a not so favorable combo matchup but you know as someone who's playing high tide i don't think i want to sit down next to you or across from you yeah um, I mean, I guess I had four blue blasts yesterday, so maybe it'd be fine. But typically, I wouldn't want to sit down across from you. I played against some blue blasts, um, some nice beta blue blasts from Doug. Uh, but they just they just kind of stemmed the bleeding a little bit on the prowess creatures, and then I stuck a Lelia. So you got to be careful with with how you choose to use your removal spells because the Lelia is just so crazy. Yeah, that card is. Pushed. I really like it. It uh, is. I really like it, especially in like the cascading rhinos decks. Um, just, yeah. Uh, it gets a trillion counters. Yeah. And it cascade interacts nicely with uh, Simeon Spirit Guides to come down a turn early. Um, yeah. Okay, um, so that's yeah, that's uh, Thopter Sword, and then you played Enchantress yep. in the final. Which it was much of the same game one. I stuck a Lelia. It helped draw me into land drops to be able to play Obosh, and then eventually I was able to to stomp myself because you can't stomp any of their stuff. Um, and then per the damage couldn't be friended and they died in game two. However, I finally drew the pillages in the matchup, which I hadn't drawn previously. And, and his draws was uh fortified village into fortified village into canopy Vista. And on my turn three, I stone rained one. Then he played an unbridled growth on one. And I stone rained that one. So he's down to one land. And he top decked a land, which was a temple. Scryed a non-land to the bottom. And then basically just died. So I was able to just stone rain him out. Yeah, and that just seems like a really good matchup for you. Like, of the top eight, it seems like maybe that's the one you want to play in the finals the most. Uh, So the top eight was Mono Black, Thopter Sword, uh, the Asmo Food List, Infect... High tide, High tide, blue white control, me. Um, yeah. So I would have, if I could have picked my matchups, it probably would have been infect, infect into mono black into uh, enchantress. Okay, so I mean, pretty good matchup spread uh, overall, but it doesn't feel like you're a dog to any of those decks. You know, I wouldn't no. be surprised if you told me you beat any of or all of them uh, in a tournament. Well, I, I beat, I beat two of the top. Uh, Two of the top eight in the Swiss on yeah. Blue White and, and Enchantress. Um, and then, like, this deck is just so well set up for creature decks. And you've got a surprising amount of, of card advantage and grind. You can outgrind most mid range decks and control decks, honestly. Um, and the creature lands are huge against Wraths, which are, you know, yep. super important as a control deck. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you mentioned some thoughts on the sideboard, perhaps. Um, yeah. Anything so, looking back you had changed or any gaps in that area? Um, I don't think there are a ton of gaps. Uh, I would say the the pillages are, are really good. Um, you just, it doesn't necessarily have to be pillage, but you need a card that you can one-for-one -one swap with Flameslash for the control matchup. Mm -hmm. um, 
whether that's another card advantage thing or, or whatever. Um, definitely want the spell bombs for the pro red creatures. Uh, you definitely want two more pieces of graveyard hate, whatever that may be. Um, the sulfur elemental, uh, if, if you don't think there's going to be Mara proc or whatever, or death and taxes or uh, white weenie or tokens, that can easily go. I really liked Vampire's Vengeance. Um, <laughs> that card's really powerful. Yeah, uh, there aren't a lot of vampires running around in this format, funnily enough. Uh, so it's it's basically just deal two to all all creatures. Um, your prowess threats all live through it because it triggers prowess and they become X threes. Um, the instant speed is really nice, and this one over say like the the pirate one, the blood token is free. Yeah, uh, so this is a strict surprisingly to relevant. The pirate one, right? It's just it's yeah. a rarity jump, so popper players don't get this one. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, if if there happens to be a vampire deck or whatever, then you'll you'll play the pirate one begrudgingly. Um, yep. And then the void mirrors, uh, like I, like you mentioned earlier, you could probably go down one or two and up, uh, up, up two stone brains or something like that. Yeah, I would definitely be more scared of a couple stone brains. Um, yeah, it really doesn't seem like there's many gaps in this. Uh, one th another thing you could do um, if enchantress decides that they're going to play like nevermore or something on stomp yeah so you can't cast it you could consider uh playing some blast zones um oh yeah it's a it's an answer uh right and not only that it it's pretty good in some other spots too yeah and i think they're pretty cheap right they're definitely below a dollar yeah they're so. they're they're below a dollar and you definitely have the room if you you have the room for them you could probably switch out like mishra's factories one to one yeah. and like two copies maybe um the like uh there's a player in modern who sort of came up with the obosh deck in general it's uh im hayashi mm -hmm. yep. um he plays eight colorless lands in his mono red li lists all the time um wow gitu encampment definitely much worse than factory in terms of the end product it's just that it is actually a red source so I could see going up to, to like six colorless lands. I don't know that I would feel comfortable playing eight, but yeah, like I down down two encampments, up two blast zones, or a one and one, one down one encampment, down one factory for two. Right, because modern Probably doesn't play. have get to encampment, but they have den of the bugbear, right? Yes, den Den's den is insane. Yeah, uh, the card obviously is disgusting. You would you would love to have it in this list, but you know I think it's like five to eight dollars or something. Yep. Um... Now, one thing I've been thinking about, I think Bone Crusher Giant is just really good as far as a fair card goes. I, yeah. think, I think both modes are worth a card a lot of the time, and combined, it's really powerful. Uh, would you say Bone Crusher is one of the best, like, I guess, fair cards, right? Like, it's... It, it's very good. Um, I think this format is a little more like Popper than Modern, just in terms of threat size. Most creatures are smaller on average. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Two mana shock is is an actual removal spell most of the time. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I would say like the most like Bone Crusher is probably the least important creature. Uh, Lelia is probably the best creature, but it may not be the most important. I think the being able to turn on the aggression with the one drops is sort of the key to this deck. Um, yeah, basically. Being able to put pressure on your opponent so that they they have to interact with you, and then you can just sort of let your card advantage take over the game eventually. Uh, it's very important. And you can they... ship in for some early damage too. And if they do ma yep. manage to stabilize, you're still drawing live to you know 12 burn spells, or I guess um, uh, 16 with bone crushers. Yeah. So having the option to obosh and make both your chain lightnings and your lightning bolts <laughs> into deal sixes is a super easy way to close the window. Yeah, that's disgusting, right? Because if your control opponent has kind of your board wiped and kind of in control, if you just get to seven mana, play an Obosh with two lightning bolts up, that's really hard. Um, yeah. F funny thing, um, against Enchantress in game one, I had a Lelia, and it, uh, that was like on six count, four, four or five counters, maybe six. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I tapped out for Obosh, and his response was uh, out of time. So... They both got phased out for two turns, but I just followed it up with Olalia and was able to chip in for a bunch of damage, and then 
it, they Obosh phased back in, and I was able to bolt him during his upkeep to deal six, and he was at five. So that was a sweet, oh, sweet wow. little line. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really uh, nice. So I, I would say this list feels really good. Um, you have a ton of flood insurance. You have so much to do with your mana. I would consider adding more lands before cutting them. Um, okay. In general, I think that decks... People try to cheat on lands. It's just... Yeah. It sucks to flood out, um, but it sucks even more to not play the game at all, and that's what happens when you get screwed. And this deck has so much to do with its mana between Obosh, Synthesizer Sack, the Creature Lands... Yeah, I mean even Bone Crusher Giant, right? Because it's yeah, it's, it's a two, two drop, cards but it's for also, one. It's five mana worth of stuff to spend your mana on, so that helps yep. too. Um, no, that makes sense. Um, sounds like honestly a really clean tournament run for you. It doesn't seem like there were that many things making you sweat. Um, no, not really. Um, the Thopter Sword matchup was pretty scary. Um, and I thought Blue White could be scary. Uh, but I guess I was just maybe as draws didn't line up well but right i was able to just be aggressive when when i could and and close the game out with burn which is you know classically what a red deck can do yep now let's say there were uh you know another win a tiger tournament in you know two or four weeks or something and yeah. for whatever reason you weren't allowed to play mono red uh, yeah in any form what do you think uh, what would be like some runner-up choices for you especially after we've kind of seen a meta game uh, after this one? um let me go to my folders real quick. Um, yeah. We love a nice Moxfield folder. So I'm not a combo player, I would say. It's just generally not in my wheelhouse. Do not particularly enjoy it. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I would like something that is fast enough aggression-wise that I could pressure combo decks, but still has the ability to, to grind against mid-range decks. Um, I would say it would probably be like a Luris brew of some kind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The three decks I just pulled up are all Luris decks. Um, so I have like a Zombardment list. Um, it's it's Luris based. It's it's a it's over budget right now, but I haven't updated it in forever. Um, it's essentially it's Carrion Feeder. It's Champion of the Perished, um, and it's Undead Augur. That's sort of the core. Oh yeah. Um, and then you have you have Goblin Bombardment um, as one of two red cards main, and the other is Dread Horde Butcher, which is like it's got the Slith effect, so it grows when it hits people, and then when it dies, it deals damage uh, equal to its power to any target. Yeah, so cool. I think it's got Cabal Therapy and Inquisition. Um, so you're just trying, you're just like this this aggressive creature deck that has the ability to sort of aristocrat people out, but you can also just draw a ton of cards with Undead Augur. Um, I have a blue-black uh, Luris control deck. Um, so the only things, the only three cards you can recur in the main deck are Baleful Strix, Mishra's Bauble, and a single seal of removal. Okay. And other than that, uh, it's just like this classic blue-black control deck. You know, counter spells, um, cut downs, power word kill, spell snare, dig through time, yeah. preordain, inquisition, treasure cruise. And the last list um, is it's a it's a black white mid range deck. It's kind of like Dead Guy Ale, I guess. Okay. Um, I think black white is land wise the best two color combination in the format. Caves of Coilos is cheap as heck. Concealed Courtyard is only like a dollar. Yeah. And Shambling Vent is like sixteen cents. So you get twelve real dual lands, four of which are mana sinks, and the mana seems really good. Um, beyond that, uh, you you can still play him to Torok in air quotes with Gerard's verdict. Yeah, um, it's, it's not as good, obviously, but it's castable on basically any two lands in the deck. And I don't want to play him in my five planes deck. Yep. Um, then you get Inquisition, Lingering Souls, and the threats are Seeker of the Way, uh, Evolve Sleeper, Luminarch Aspirant, and Mother of Runes, and then just good interaction along the curve those are good cards those are really good cards um i like that you call out the uh, dual land prices as being important because i think that really affects the playability of two color decks um i know that black red they get like 12 dual lands for like a dollar and 20 cents 
Yeah. But if you look at blue red, and I felt this myself, and I was talking to uh, Patrick who was playing blue red Phoenix, and I talked to Jen who's playing the blue red Talarian Terror list, I think. Yeah. Um, and everyone just agrees like, just playing Shivan Reefs isn't enough, and you take a ton of damage. Playing Temple sucks, and Sulphur Falls recently got reprinted down to like seven dollars for a playset. But that is still yeah. a huge investment. You can get four Lelias for that price. <laughs> yep. Um, I know tap lands suck. They really do. But you should just you should just take your medicine, play the tap lands, have good mana, be a turn behind the curve sometimes. I think that's a good way of putting it. Um, so I, kind of... I personally would look to Wandering Fumarole. It's like eighteen yeah. cents, and Four one hits hard. It really does. I think Fumarole over Temple probably makes a lot of sense. And honestly, I might start looking at that a little bit more because I enjoy Talarian Terrors a lot. <laughs> I think Terror is really good. Um, Did you know that Talarian think... Terror has a big brother as well? Uh, S- Sailor's Bane? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sailor's Bane. Um, I think great. Ethereal Forger, Forager is under export. That card's really good. Um would you ever what consider else? bringing Delver to a big tournament? You said you play Legacy Delver. I think Delver of Secrets is not very good in this format. Um, uh, because the cantrips the card. set it up well enough? Um, the cantrips, and people are prepared for creatures in this format. Um, yeah. Legacy, while like Delver is probably the best and most popular deck, there's so much more combo and stuff going around. Your average lists are going to play like four to six removal spells, realistically. Um there's not Whereas really if you look at 26 removal spells in Legacy. Yeah, yeah, my list has 26, right? Disgusting. So, Del- Delver, like, the threats out of Delver, like, Dreadhorde Arcanist, kind of annoying. I can't stomp or pyr- uh, Pyrite Spell Bomb it, but, yeah. or, or uh, Spike Field Hazard it, but I still have 12, 12 answers to it. I was going to say, yeah, you only have 12 answers now. Boo-hoo. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, like, Terror, on the other hand, I have basically zero answers to. Yeah, that's a brick So, ball. Terror is really good. The Dragon's Rage Channeler, etc. Not very good. That makes sense. Um, so kind of wrapping this up and moving towards the end. Um, yeah. So you, you just started thinking about this format not too long ago, and now you've taken down a tournament. And I think we saw a pretty good deck diversity there. I think a lot of stuff was represented. How do you feel overall about, like, uh, let's say, metagame, deck building, deck diversity, um, like gameplay quality. Do you, I guess really the question is, do you like this format going forward? Um, yeah, I like the format a lot. I think the ability to explore what you want to explore is really fun. It's one of the most things about Magic, and this format's wide open, right? I came in with a deck I would literally not played before the event and was able to take it down. Yeah, and one thing I've learned... Um, is that I am a terrible deck builder, and I think a lot of Magic players are, truthfully. Because, like, Modern, yeah. I could pick up Murktide, and I'd have to put in the work, but, like, I don't have to create Murktide. I don't have to build a list. Uh, yeah. And we're getting to the point where we start, you know, having lists to pull from, but it is hard to build a deck. But I feel like this format, there's still so much room, and there's so much underexplored, because we've got access to most of 20,000 cards, you know? Yeah. Um, one thing I'll say is, basically... All I'm doing in terms of deck building is finding an old list from some past format and trying to see what it gets that's new or things that aren't in budget anymore and trying to find comparable replacements for it. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Why reinvent the wheel when you can find something that already rolls downhill? Yeah. So like Obosh, the modern version, I get basically none of their threats. I can't play Season Pyromancer. I can't play Fury. I can't play Ragavan, etc. But the core suite of removal spells is identical. Um, so yeah. you just the old list back when the deck first came out were on prowess creatures. So I said, I'll play the prowess creatures and bone crusher. Yeah, and then sure. Lelia is just a, a cracked threat. Yeah, Lelia is the gravy on top. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, I really appreciate the time. Uh, anything yeah, else you want to add? Anything you want to shout out while you're here? I don't have a ton of following on YouTube, but Hey, if you got something, to shout uh, out, uh, shout outs to you, I guess wouldn't <laughs> have had nearly the information about the, the meta game and things like that without without your work. I really appreciate that. That's one of the things I'm trying to work on, just like giving people the tools to brew, right? Because you can't brew yeah. if you don't know what people are playing against, and if you can't yeah. brew, why go to the tournament? You know what I mean? I would have showed up with like blue white flash <laughs> and probably got stomped. <laughs> yeah, I just want people to have um, you know the information to like kind of engage with the format. 
and honestly, I just want to like legitimize it. I just want to make things look kind of like there's people playing it and having fun. Like a 31 person tournament is no joke. Um, yeah. We we actually fired an eight person spell table tournament online a couple Mondays ago. Probably gonna try to do more of that. So if you're, I think you're in the Discord. Um, yeah. Stay tuned for that because I know two hours is a pretty far drive a lot of the time. But maybe you want to jump in on a spell table tournament or something. Yeah, like the weekly events are literally impossible for me. I would, yeah. you know, in a perfect world, get there at like seven o'clock, uh, from, from after work. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's uh, cool. However, if you guys are doing like monthly events, uh, definitely we'll probably be up there for those. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll uh, try and keep them going. I think uh, we're really happy with Mavericks. I think they're really happy with the turnout. So I expect to see more of that going forward. Cool. And they don't have to be for a Taiga. I'll play for I'll play for Storkrat. I yeah, care. I think I think I was talking to them. We're gonna look at like every two or four weeks, probably like ten or fifteen dollar buy in, just pay out credit. Um, yeah. Nothing crazy, but that store t- tends to lean a little bit more competitive. So I think ten or fifteen dollar buy in is fine. Then maybe every once in a while we do something big. So. Yeah, I mean, to me, like ten dollars is the minimal amount of money I expect to. Yeah. Enter a tournament. It's just enough that you know you want to take it seriously. You know you can't really yeah. joke around when there's. A little bit of money on the line. Cool. For well, sure. I really appreciate the time, Austin. I'll probably let you go now. But uh, okay. thanks for coming out. Thanks for trying out the format. I know it's a, it's a lot to ask someone to start brewing, especially with a budget. But I'm glad I'm glad you did. Yeah, I love Budget Commander. Uh, so sort of in my wheelhouse. Yep, I feel that. All right, man. Well, I will see you at the next event, I hope. All right? Sounds great. All right. Keep up with the good work. <laughs> you too. Good luck with uh, the other formats. Thanks.